Hello. <laughs> right, a few people have asked about the Jodie Marsh steroid expose. Uh, uh, I got my blood to boil a bit, did that one. Um, I've got two real points with it. The first one is, well, the second one's going to be her. The first one is the actual program itself. I was contacted about this program some time ago by the director, a guy called Mabeem, and he'd explained to me that um, the previous show that was done got a lot of criticism because it was basically the Jodie Marsh show. So this was to be more factual, more documentary-based, and he, in fact, came from the BBC and had been doing documentaries for the BBC. Um, so, obviously, but at first they were very, very cagey. He just told me it was a a bodybuilder who won a lot of shows. In fact, I think at one point he even said she was professional. So, because my first indication was about it's Jodie Marsh, but when he said all this, I thought, well, it can't be, it can't be. She's only done a couple of piddly shows and she's crap. Um, anyway, turns out it was her, so I refused to be involved. Um, now, we spoke at some length, and he pretty much they pretty much begged me to get involved because they were having the same problem with everyone they approached. Anyone that had any sense and had anything decent to say was refusing to get involved because of her involvement. Anyway, the program. I, I must admit, I thought Brandy, the American girl, was very level-headed, very honest, very open. You know, she she discussed not so much what she did in the term of dosages, but she discussed that she did things, and for her it was a trade-off of gain, risk against benefit, and she felt it was viable. And then there was a young lad from Ireland who, all right, naive and a bit innocent, but otherwise decent. The rest of them were a bunch of bleeding dough balls. Most of them had some sort of serious psychological issue. I mean, I actually think the girl that was very manly, and I don't mean her by any disrespect by this, but I don't think she was probably the prettiest thing to start with. And I actually think she was using because it was a, a way of actually having a sex change. She embraced being a drag queen so easily that it just seemed to me that she wanted to be a bloke. But she was happy. So where was the fault in that? If it made her happy and achieved what she wanted to do, then I didn't see the issue with that, but it was painted as a negative. The girl with the tattoos that nearly killed herself and daughter begged to leave, she was just point-blank bonkers, nuts. That wasn't steroids, that was just her being a nut job. I mean, who the hell has bleeding lungs and carries on using the drugs that bloody cause it? And then we had the dealer. I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't have bought off him. He wasn't the brightest button in the box, for sure. He didn't seem to really know what he was talking about. And then, of course, we had the man whose heart exploded. Now, what the programme didn't tell you about this gentleman was that he had a several hundred pound a day coke habit. And he refused to let the documentary say this. Now, I know this for fact because it came from the director. Um, it was another fucking idiot. The thing is, the whole program was centered around steroid abuse not steroid use i mean scott spoke some sense but unfortunately out of a two two hour interview we had what two minutes um very sensationalism um wasn't a credit it was better than a lot i've seen but still wasn't fair or credible and i've i've messaged the director and told him this and told him I'm more than happy to do an open thing with him, but I just don't want that silly bin involved. Now, getting down to Miss Geordie Marsh. American champion. What the fuck is she on about the deluded bint? She won a regional show for a two-bit natty friggin' fed that no one's heard of. And then to claim that she had the best abs on stage. In bodybuilding terms, the girl was fat. Ridiculous. She entered the UK BFF shows knowing damn well they were open feds. Was happy to do so until she lost because she thought she was it. And then when she got beat by better girls, it had to be the drugs. It had to be they were using drugs. It couldn't be that they actually worked hard and trained hard and weren't fannies like she is. I've seen her train in the gym. My dead grandmother could train harder. She is a fucking joke. 
you know, I had a bit of respect for her when she first started out because I know she's vegan and I know she's strict with it and she tried to eat fish and everything else. And I thought, well, credit to you, girl. But that soon went when she started opening her mouth with all these bollocks about being the best at this and crap that. Utter bollocks. I mean, what also annoyed me about the show and annoyed me about her, she spoke to a doctor who told her they were not addictive and who told her no one has ever died directly from steroid use but she just point blank ignored these points and moved on to a rant about how bad they were biased was not the word um she goes on about the young irish lad um not seeking expert advice there are no experts there is no medical research there has never been research drawn into multiple compound steroid use coupled with fat burner stimulants and god knows what else we put into our bodies there is research into individual chemicals lab research is very few real life testing and i mean the closest thing we have to an expert is probably pope from the states but i noticed that he wasn't in the program so i don't know how she can see warrant seeing an expert when there are no experts in fact the bloke that had the four heart attacks his coach has probably got more real-world experience and more knowledge than the doctor. And to be fair, the doctor wasn't anti-steroids. He was quite open and honest and straight up. It's a shame that they use such um, useless, dozy cow to present such... Um, interesting topic that could have been a very good very informative program but now they had to turn it into a hate campaign with her crusade and her bollocks anyway i mean it's done it's done now and it's not done us any favors but i don't suppose it's done us any harm because at the end of the day nobody listens to the silly cow anyway um she says she's going to continue competing i'll be interested to see what she does with the bnbf I've got a funny feeling she'll skip to the States and go into a easy, unknown fed for an easy win because I don't think she can hack a proper competition. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm actually surprised my TV survived the um, me watching that programme because I was going nuts. <laughs> but it, it is what it is, I suppose. I have pushed my beam to do another one, though I don't think it will come to anything, but we can hope. I know I've got an article in The Guardian soon, uh, more around DMP than anything else, but hopefully that will have been handled a bit better, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Anyway, little rant over. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's laughable really. Uh, it's laughable that they get such an idiot to present such a sensitive subject. Um, but, oh well. Maybe one day us users will get a fair hearing. Uh, and maybe one day people will actually get true information and then be able to make their own minds up about drug use. Oh, that's, I mean, this is the other thing I found really ironic. She's going on about changing your body and changing this and changing that. The girl's got plastic tits. She's got a nose that looks like a fucking woodpecker. And she shoves poison into her lips and skin to make it all plump and fleshy. But that's fine, let alone the booze and coke that gets shoved up a nose. But those drugs are fine. No, they never killed anyone, did they? Not. Right, anyway, enough of my bollocks. I'll catch you guys soon.